Hello and welcome. In today's episode, I'm going to show you installation of vinyl tongue and groove flooring. So as you see me here zooming around, let's get right to the point with the price so you have an idea how much this stuff costs. So I got 28 boxes is what I purchased, but I ended up using only 24. And 24 boxes times $40.98 a box came out to just under a thousand bucks. So that's what this um, job cost because the labor is mine. So obviously I don't have to pay any, anything to anybody for installation. So vinyl flooring, that product, in my opinion, is I love it. The reason why, because it's very resistant to water and moisture and you can put it down straight on concrete like I'm doing right here. You have different manufacturers have different rules for their product. This one here is from Shaw. And the uh, instructions say that if you're putting it on concrete, don't put any underlayment underneath it. Just go straight on concrete. Just make sure, obviously, that it's clean. There's no imperfections in it. And that's exactly what I did. So as I'm going along, sometimes I have to use the broom to kind of sweep everything off. But I've cleaned this floor pretty much like two or three times already to get it ready for the floor. But that's all it is. It's just tongue and groove. This is not the peel and stick one because I don't care for the glue ones. So this is just simple tongue and groove flooring. All you gotta do is score it with a box cutter and then just snap it. So you don't even need power tools to really install it. And all you do is just overlap it. I would overlap at least 12 inches and over here I did closer to two feet. Uh, just so you have a strong floor. So you wanna overlap. And once again, every manufacturer is going to have different rules for this. But to overlap it, the seams by about two feet and you should be perfectly fine. And each of those pieces, by the way, is about four feet, if you're curious. So the vinyl flooring is very flexible. Um, pricing wise is pretty good. It's pretty much just like all the other um, flooring, like laminate. I just like this stuff because if you have dogs or you have... Um, you know kids or you have you, you live <laughs> time to relax a little bit if you live in an area where you have a lake or something and people are coming into the house wet this flooring is absolutely ideal and perfect for that because it's water resistant some of it is waterproof and this can get wet and there's no damage that happens to it and you can't say that about laminate flooring because you got to be careful with that one and same thing with hardwood flooring even though I absolutely love hardwoods, but they are very expensive, not only to buy, but also to install. And just to have to give you an idea, the cheap hardwood flooring you can get for about four or five dollars a square foot, but your install on that is also about four or five dollars a square foot. So you're spending basically ten bucks a square foot to put hardwood floors down. So this house, 720 square feet. If I did this with hardwood flooring, you're looking at basically about $7,000. And with that one, you def definitely would have to put down underlayment. So you're adding another maybe 50 cents or a dollar a square foot. It depends what kind of underlayment you put. But this here, nice and straightforward. If you do it yourself, you're saving yourself a nice chunk of change. Because as I was talking with one of you guys in the comments section, all the labor for anything manual labor nowadays is just going up in price because a lot of people don't want to do it and there's not much competition for manual labor. So the people that do those kind of jobs, they increase their pricing because they know there's no competition. So you can save yourself easily here about a dollar fifty to two bucks or even higher to be honest, a square foot in labor. So this house, 720 square feet, $2 a square foot, that could be potentially a $1,400 savings in labor if you do it yourself. And this is what construction is all about. If you save yourself money, if you do things yourself, uh, you're going to have instant equity in a house if you're following my recipe, kind of like what I'm doing. You can hire out all the difficult uh, things that are heavy and require multiple people to do. And then you can get on the inside of the house where you have a roof over your head and you're not getting wet through the rain or anything. And just basically work at your own pace and save yourself a nice chunk of change. 
So all of you guys can do what I'm doing. I am nobody special. Uh, you can do your own flooring. You can do your own trim work. Um, you can do your own tongue and groove if you really wanted to, even though I paid for that one because it was long pieces. Um, install your own uh, doors. There's a lot of things you can do, and this is how it turned out. Please forgive me for the quality of the camera, but the GoPro is not very good in the low light, so it's not going to look very good, but this is how everything turned out. And I took a Swiffer to this. It took me about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to clean it. That's the other beauty, what I like about this product, that you can just clean it so easy. You don't really honestly need to have a vacuum. Just get yourself one of those wet Swiffers and you clean the house in 10, 15 minutes. So that's the other benefit of this thing. And that's the, the four boxes of shawl flooring that I was talking about that I had left over. So I, I'm going to go and return that. And then you saw the door also. I'm installing a storm door on that one um, side of the house that doesn't have the overhang. What well, does have an overhang, but not the little you know stoop that I made. So this is the little bedroom. Um, you can see kind of what I'm going to be doing here in a little bit. I have doors to install, obviously, and cabinets, which will be in the next episode. So you're, see you're going to see me install the kitchen cabinets. So that's the first bathroom. Nothing special, just a bathtub in that one, toilet and a sink. You see that? That's still wet. And here's the main be bedroom. It, it'll fit a queen size bed with no issue and it'll even fit a king size bed but it, it will honestly would get a little bit tight in there but you know it's it it'll work no problem as you can see the room is actually pretty good size so for 720 square feet that's not bad that's the closet right here that opening is 38 inches because i'm going to put a three foot bifold door in there and that door is going to be uh, a wood door because I like to make my houses kind of look like a half and half cabin. It's got nice character to it. And see, that's the main bathroom toilet right there in the middle of your screen. Obviously, this one has mess right there in the tub. Well, it's not a tub, it's a walk-in shower. So I do, usually when I build two bathrooms, I put one walk-in shower and one bathtub. So that's all my plumbing situation, nice and simple and easy. And this is the stackable washer dryer. I put the covers on. So everything is coming together. So this flooring is pretty darn good. I like it. Um, I Now that I discovered this couple years ago, I only use vinyl flooring. I don't do any laminate anymore. And obviously I can't afford to do the hardwood flooring because it's just too expensive for my little affordable homes that I build. So in my affordable houses, I can't put uh, justify putting, you know, hardwood floors at seven, eight thousand dollars just for flooring alone. It's just, you know, it's just not feasible for me to do so. Well, that's that. So trim is still there. Nothing fell off. So everything is good. And this is, I just want to show you how easy this stuff is to clean. I already did the top row, so it's not wet. Well, it is wet, but but you get the idea. It's It works straight, nice and straightforward, and you can clean your house easy peasy, lemon breezy. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time when I put up the kitchen cabinets. Take care.